Well, yeah, last week was definitely unexpected. But now the question is, how does Oklahoma finish this thing off this week? What's up, everybody? This is the Sooners on SI Weekend Preview. I'm John Hoover. That's Ryan Chapman. Ryan, Oklahoma sure put the hurt on Alabama last week in the home finale. Um, Sooners beat them up, and they beat them down. 24-3 was the final score, but it could have been a lot worse. Could have been uh, 34. Who knows? Um, We'll see how the momentum continues from that game. But, Ryan, to revisit that really quickly, Alabama came into the game as a two-touchdown favorite. They couldn't even score one touchdown. Kind of almost did, but uh, we'll we'll end it right there. It was a wild night because uh, if you look at it, after just dominating Alabama on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football, right, that's the part that nobody saw coming, the domination. But uh, the Sooners finally qualified for a bowl game. Like Brent Venable said, there's a a 25-year streak on the line and nobody wants to be that team, right, that ends the streak. But then OU fans rushed the field. I counted, seriously, I was down there in the middle of them, and I counted, did a little head count, about 20,000. It was insane. The entire playing surface, the sidelines, the end zones, everything was full of people, full of humanity. It was uh, was pretty incredible. Um, OU's now 6-5. and Venables is the new spokesman for Taco Bell. Anyway, before we dive into this week's game at LSU, how big was that night for this football team where they're kind of – think about where they're at right now, this team, where this program is at in their first year in the SEC, and uh, where is that coach right now? Yeah, I, I mean, how can you put a price on a, a $200,000? You put uh, you can put a price on that scene in Norman. That was the SEC fine. But, no, I mean, it was huge on a couple fronts. First off, for guys like – Danny Stutzman, Woody Washington, Ethan Downs, Billy Bowman, you know, they didn't come back to finish six and five or seven and five or eight and five, which would be the the best finish they had possible if you priced an LSU plus a bowl game. But they did get that memory in that moment. And it was a huge release. And it was the, the emotion of a tough season on the field, the emotion of a tough season off the field, whether it be players dealing with adversity the Venables family dealing with adversity. So I think that's huge. But also, as we roll into this week and we talk about Oklahoma and LSU and how that game's going to play out, I think it was huge for the offense to see a couple of things. First off, you are allowed to get through a game with an acceptable amount of turnovers. It was just the one. Taylor Tatum didn't come back into that game really after that. But the offensive line, they had shown bursts in the form of a drive or two here and there against Missouri, a first half against Ole Miss. It was a four-quarter performance start to finish, and they stayed out of third and long. It, it's something that you are allowed to, to get positive yardage on first and second down as well. That's going to be huge for this team going forward. Does that mean that suddenly they're going to line up and just whoop LSU for four straight quarters? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, as long as they take care of the football, and this is, we'll dive into it, I, I think one of the, it's grading on a curve, by worst defenses that they've played, that's not necessarily an insult to what LSU is. It's just a fact of the matter is, they played some really, really, really good defenses since LSU one is not one of them. They're just a middle-of-the-road average defense that Oklahoma can kind of road grade on a little bit. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to carry that momentum. Now, they're going to have to play mistake-free. They did that against uh, Alabama. going to be a little bit different when you're dropped into the middle of the most hostile environment in college football. Yeah, OU's been pretty good on the road in their season finales throughout the years, but uh, Brian Kelly, uh, what was his record, 21-1? and one. Uh, in road games at night at LSU, with the most recent loss being to with the only the only loss being the most recent game to Alabama. So yeah, fourteen um, and one at night at night fourteen thirteen and one is that what it was? Yeah, thirteen or fourteen, whatever. It, okay, I was thinking it was twenty one out of twenty two or something like that. It, it, that I, at home in general, that's okay. the record. At that's night it. specifically, I believe it's either 13 or 14 and one. Well, this one's at night. Uh, oh, you sit in the road one more time. Uh, Saturday night, Baton Rouge, games on ESPN. Ryan, all anybody wants to talk about, as you just mentioned, Death Valley, right? Uh, how hostile the LSU crowd is. Ray Menable said the most hostile crowds he's ever faced were against LSU in the state of Louisiana in a bowl game in New Orleans. So Tiger, this is his time, first time at Tiger Stadium. Here's the bottom line, Ryan. Last I checked, and coaches love saying this stuff, none of those guys up in the stands are suiting up. None of them are going to be throwing or tackling or passing or or, or catching passes or running or anything. 
But LSU's actually got a really good roster. Not an elite roster, not a, not a college football playoff roster, but I think they've got SEC talent across the board. And while I don't think Brian Kelly is necessarily a great fit culturally for LSU, I do think he's a really good football coach. His 311 wins are the most of any current football coach in FBS. And we're talking career wins there, obviously. LSU's a six-and-a-half-point favorite. What do you think? Does OU get out of Baton Rouge with another win, and how does it happen? Well, here, here'll be the really interesting thing. There are going to be 102,000 fans packed in that stadium, and they're going to be ready to yell. The question is that who? Is it going to be at the team in white, which is usually LSU, or is it going to be the Oklahoma Sooners? That's something we're all going to find out together because you, you go back a week ago and Bandy scores on the first play of the game, and LSU's band has to start playing to drown out the fire Brian Kelly chants from the student section. So I expect it's going to be loud. I expect it's going to be raucous. If Oklahoma can get it off to a fast start, I know it's different personnel. It's not Michael Hawkins Jr. It's Jackson Arnold. But the dream starting against Auburn on yep. the road, if they get off to that start, the fans might turn on the home team. It, it could be pretty awkward. Uh, so I do think the crowd's going to be a factor. I don't know for what team yet. A lot of that will be predicated on what happens. He, here are the uh, the two things that, that I really am keeping an eye on. First off, Oklahoma's offense, LSU's defense. I just don't think LSU uh, – I don't think their defensive line is that good. I think they're good pass rushing. I think that they can get moved with, all around in the running game. We hadn't seen Oklahoma do that to a defensive line until last week, so they can roll that forward. We'll see. The flip side of that, LSU, very explosive offense. They're going to hit chunk plays. If those chunk plays don't go for touchdowns, though, they really, really struggle in the red zone. Oklahoma's defense, conversely, good at bowing up a big play, force goal in, instead of a touchdown. So if Oklahoma's turning those big plays into field goals instead of touchdowns defensively, and they're able to move the ball, you, you can look at our game picks here that published on the side on Friday. But I, negative Nelly, 24-20, Oklahoma getting out of there 7-5. and five. Interesting. I think I'm pretty close to you there. Uh, we'll put our picks on the uh, on the website on Friday. So while you're watching this video, you'll be able to scroll down and see what, uh, what one of those files is going to be our picks. Here's my prediction. I think Brent Venables and Joe John Finley and Jackson Arnold, I think they announced their intentions for winning this game last week. 50 rushes, 12 passes. That's the formula. And if you ask me, as an observer of OU football, as a, an objective kind of observer, commentator sometimes, right? Write a column once in a while. It, it, to me, it's silly that it took this coaching staff this long to commit to doing that, Ryan. You have, dude, you literally have almost zero wide receivers at this point in this, in this, of this you know, season. Why are you trying to throw passes, right? Uh, you, your offensive line has given up more quarterback sacks than anybody in the country. Right now, actually, after the Alabama game, I think they're 130th in the country, so they're still three teams worse than them. But uh, why are you trying to throw passes with that, uh, that, that personnel grouping of wide receivers and offensive line? I loved last week's game plan against Bama, and I'll say it as simply as I can. Run the dang ball. You heard the, the guy say it. That's how you win. And I think it can work again against LSU. Shout out to Brent Key, Georgia Tech yep. head coach. Yep. We'll find out if uh, there's any more familiarity with the rest of the Georgia Tech staff in the coming days. But yeah, run the ball. Here's the good news too. LSU gives up a lot to backs out of the backfield. So what you saw passing at Alabama was a lot of shovel passes, uh, whether it be to Xavier Robinson, Bower Sharp, Jake Roberts. Uh, I, I think that it's one of those things where Oklahoma can move the ball, throwing the ball without throwing the ball downfield and to mm -hmm. wide receivers. If that makes yep. sense. Yep. You use in moderation, Jake Roberts, Bauer Sharp, Xavier Robinson, Taylor Tatum, if Sawchuck and, and Barnes can give it a go. I'm with you, Hoover. If Oklahoma's throwing the ball like 25 times out of necessity, I think that's bad news for, for Oklahoma on Saturday night. Yeah. All right. Good stuff, Ryan. Thanks as always. We'll see how it unfolds. Saturday night in Baton Rouge. I'll be there, of course. You'll be there. And our new guy, Carson Field, is going to be there as well, like he was last week for the Bama game. We're all going to be bringing you – he's got the images from the sidelines. We're going to be bringing you our thoughts from the press box and lots more because why? Because Oklahoma Sooners on SI.com is where you're going to find comprehensive coverage of OU sports, Sooner football, the whole thing. We will have um, 
all the pregame coverage, all the latest breaking news before kickoff, all the up-to-date injury reports from Baton Rouge. Plus, you got to dive into our – you got one more chance this year, regular season, world-famous in-game, real-time observations. Don't go to Twitter. Go to Oklahoma Sooners on SI.com to find our observations in the game. Our post-game reports are going to be up after the game, plus all the post-game interviews, players, coaches, as well as our post-game reaction from the field at Tiger Stadium. I got that approved. We get to stand down on the field and uh, do our post-game one more time. And don't forget the Sooners on SI podcast certified fresh from who knows where this week because we're going on the road. Uh, it might be from the car, might be from the airport, might be from back at the hotel if they'll let us sit in their lobby and do a pod- podcast like we did at Ole Miss. That was fun. You're not going to want to miss that one. That's going to be a good one. Best of all, all of our content is free, and all you got to do is keep it right here, Oklahoma Sooners on SI.com. For Ryan Chapman, I'm John Hoover. We'll see you guys.